Hello, good evening. Welcome to Hucknall in Nottingham for the latest off-season ho- hockey chat. And uh, w- what a time it's been. Uh, a lot going on in the past few weeks. So a pleasure to have your company as always. Uh, good to see a good few of you in already. Don't forget that you've got the chat box on the right-hand side, so uh, feel free to join in the discussion there, ask any questions. If you've got anything you want querying or anything you want to respond to any of the other questions that we have, please feel free to use that. I'm also monitoring my Twitter, which is at John O'Bullard, so if you want to pop a question in there or uh, send it on DM, it is Uh, All available there for you. It is July. It is absolutely roasting. The fan uh, that I've been using all day has had to go up to my daughter's room. Um, The back door is open, but it's not providing too much uh, comfort at the moment. Uh, I'm just just a complete sweaty mess. And I've probably drunk my entire body weight in water today, (laughs) trying to stay hydrated. Uh, So that's why I am on this. Which you very rarely see me on beer when I'm doing one of these, but I just wanted to taste something different, so uh, uh, that's why I, that's why I've got a nice cold bottle of beer uh, while we uh, have a nice chat throughout this evening. Don't forget that uh, this will be available on a podcast once we finish recording, so you'll be able to listen to it uh, if you are. <laughs> If you are, sorry, I've just seen a, a tweet come, come through from my good mate, Ted. Um, <laughs> very reminiscent of Father Ted, if you have a look at that. So, yes, as I was, as I was saying, uh, you will be able to listen to this on a podcast, audio only, all good podcast pl- platforms, if you want to listen to it in the car or way you're out on a walk or ever um lots of lots of questions a good real good mix of questions around different subjects there's there's a a couple of panthers questions but it's certainly not dominated by the panthers as as it has been in the past so uh you know look out for that um so let's crack on and uh we will start with a question from howard walkington who is a guildford flames fan and he says wimbledon tennis reported crowds down by 12 percent by looking at flames seating plan for season tickets i can see a lot of unsold seats compared to last year less than uh, less with less than seven weeks to go can you see similar figures for panthers um no i can't at the minute but um i think this is a wider problem with all the cost of living problems that we have at the minute, the cost of petrol. To give you an example, uh, my car, which is a 1.6 Astra, I had a quarter of a tank in it. And um, it cost me £80 to fill it up to the top. So, you know, petrol isn't cheap. Cost of living isn't cheap at all. Prices are going up. And the thing is, that there's such a... A, a ring on household expenditure that there's not a lot of disposable income left to spend on things like hockey tickets. So I think it is a bit of a worry for for well, it's definitely a bit of a worry for clubs. Um, so I, I don't think there will be similar figures for Panthers. So the simple reason is there's a lot of positivity around the Panthers at the minute, which I, w- I will come on to a little later on. Um, but I think it is a worry, not just for hockey clubs, but I think for, for all sporting clubs at the minute. Um, there's, there's not that much money going about. There's, there's not that much sport, spare money about. So everyone has to compete for that very little bit of spare money. Uh, and costs just keep going up and up and up, and and things have to give in order to pay for things like uh, heating and petrol and food. So I imagine it is an incredibly worrying time. I mean, you say Wimbledon crowds are down 12%. I think there's probably still a, 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 a little bit of the COVID factor in there as well. This, this Obviously, COVID starting to run rampant again. I think these these probably many vulnerable people, certainly older people, who are probably fearful of catching it. So that may have an effect as well. Um, so I think it's a worry for, for everyone. I, I guess we won't know for sure until the season starts and we see how full arenas are and rinks are. But it's certainly something to keep an eye on. Um, one thing I have been doing uh, is keeping a track of 
where teams are signing their players from. Uh, I don't know if anyone remembers, but a few years ago on the Cats Whiskers website, I used to do a spreadsheet uh, which looked at where each team's players have come from, like how many games in the AHL, how many games in the NHL, KHL, all the sort of top leagues. Uh, and while I've been keeping a track of that, and okay, a lot of teams have got a lot of players to sign, I appreciate that. But it seems clear to me that there's not as many players coming with, with that top league experience. So maybe budgets have been cut a little bit at clubs, uh, and that's the way they're, they're getting around around it. But the other thing as well is, is that rinks are on arenas certainly aren't the cheapest places to run. So their costs are going to be increases, which is going to be passed on to the likes of the hockey teams or, or the tenants of those arenas and rinks. And that's going to get passed on to the customer or the end consumer, which is which is us as ticket holders. Um so it, it, it's you know it, it is a worrying time in that respect. So we'll have to wait and see what happens, uh, and see how full arenas and rinks are when we get back in, at the end of August for the preseason games. But you know something to keep an eye on, and hopefully, if uh, if cost comes down, which doesn't look likely, but if they do, hopefully there'll be more disposable income for people to go to places like the hockey, like the cinema like bowling, like the pub. Because at the moment, I, I, I just don't think uh, people have got that spare money, unfortunately. But thanks for your question, Howard. Uh, next one comes from Kenwin Jones, who I believe is a Cardiff Devils fan. He's at cjones5378 on Twitter. He says, interesting to see how teams develop and build their teams. Seems most now look west either to college for young, single promising players that cost less or to the EA ECHL stroke college for up and coming gems that find the AHL ECHL route too rigid and difficult to break into. AHL due to NHL future players and not yet proven enough for the big European leagues, whilst a couple look east to pick up experienced 30 year olds previously proven at top leagues, but now playing in leagues at a similar level to the elite league, but more money. Which option do you prefer? I think I prefer a mix. Um, but as I said in, in the answer to the previous question, I'm looking at where players are coming from and it's noticeable uh, how many players are coming into the league that have, that, that, and there's not the massive amount of AHL, AHL experience like we've had before. A lot of ECHL players, uh, which uh, a lot of play, players who, who come and have ECHL experience. But I think that clubs are tapping into that college market like the NCAA and, and U Sports. It's a very, very good standard of hockey, incredibly good standard. And you will pick up some good players from there. Um I mean, I've obviously seen the NCAA at the Friendship Four. The, the, the standard of hockey is phenomenal, absolutely incredible. Uh, so you will pick up good players from that level. Um, and we seem to be losing an, or not getting those sort of a, um, NHL like old players who maybe played a handful of games in the NHL. That seems to be sort of being phased out we're not seeing too many of, uh, of those coming through especially this season but is that part of the the cost of living cuts that i went on before have teams had to to cut their budget a bit and they're not uh getting the value for money don't forget that the pound against the dollar is a, a pretty much an all-time low so that's going to have an effect on on what sort of plays you can buy or or, or attract for the money that it, that is on offer um, but you know, the, the bigger clubs will be able to attract better players as such. Um, but you know, oh, you're on, Kemwin, looking for speed, yeah. I, and I think that that's noticeable. There's a, a lot more younger players coming to the elite league, uh, than there ever used to be. Um, I, I, if, you, if you look at the average age of the teams, it's certainly come down a lot. Um, obviously Sheffield went the other way last year where they had a lot of players over 30 but I think when you if you're looking at the rosters that are being put together this season there's a lot of players there who are under 30 um, you know around 25 26 so we are we are seeing the average age come down and that obviously leads to a lot a lot speedier faster teams um 
Mark, happy evening. Mark, he says, I, I thought that North American players returning from the KHL would push the quality downwards. Hasn't materialised. Also, there is a brand new AHL club starting next season, which may offset it. So, yeah, so more players go to there. Um, of course, the other thing with, with uh, the Elite League this season is the roster size has been increased 20, um, with the imports staying the same. So, that's an extra Brit that every club has to find which is great because it gives more british players a chance um i still feel the import limit is too high but that's another debate for another time um but yeah uh, so so you've got to find uh, 10 more british players to, to fill them roster spots should everyone go with uh should everyone go with uh, 14 imports um let's pop and look at the uh comments i don't know Anthony, having lived near there for a large chunk of my life, Guildford isn't a cheap place to live. I can imagine, and you, if you think of the sort of housing costs that they must have as well for rent, I mean, rent down south is, is you know, it's not fun anywhere, but especially down south. Uh, Charlie Brown, another Panthers players announcement tomorrow. They just put it on Twitter. It seems a lot of teams are, are, are announcing their rosters sort of earlier than they were. Because uh, Panthers, I think four more play, four maybe five more players to sign. So uh, that's uh, that's interesting that there's going to be another one tomorrow. Uh, Steve Moffat, evening Steve. Storm season ticket four hundred ninety pound for an adult, which is quite a bit considering everything. And last year, whilst I'm fortunate, I can afford it. Men can't, and I think this will show. Doesn't the storm season ticket cover everything though? Cover all the Challenge Cup games and also the league games, which sort of makes it a bit better value. I know I know from a Panthers point of view it just covers the league games. I think the Steelers they they only cover 25 games on their season ticket, which sort of begs the question why is it causes a season season ticket because it doesn't cover a whole season. Um Tommy says cost of living will be why there's no international teams coming in for preseason games. I think you probably got a point there because the, the cost associated bringing them over and put, putting them up in hotels, etc. So I think that's a very, very good point. I think COVID might play a, li a little bit of a role in that. Probably not as much as it did, but I st think that's probably still a factor as well. Uh, Craig, I'll keep hold of that crest question Craig because if, if I lose it I'll, I'll come back to it later when we've got a few more Panthers questions uh, can we Cardiff are now buying flats yeah that doesn't surprise me uh, Tommy who is Panthers banter good evening to you uh, Panthers have had their season ticket extension this Friday so squeezing in the signings yeah I think that's that's a good point um uh, hairy face 1984 great name uh, i won't have to worry about that with five and seeing the squad early we've announced more than they usually do Let, let's um let's put it that way <laughs> uh adam says five one net minder one left wing two right wing and one d for panthers so five more signings excellent right let's crack on um my good friend chris lovell from belfast uh, evening, Chris, if you are on. Uh, he says, given the wage cap was reportedly in for this coming season, should the cap be actively enforced and how? I think all teams should have to publish their total outgoings on wages versus the wage cap, given the setup. However, we all know the workarounds club use. Um, <sighs> wage cap. I don't see the point. Um, because... It's all a gentleman's agreement. It's all around the ball room table. It's clearly not enforced. So what? What is the point? What is the point? I do agree uh, that I think teams should have to publish their total outgoings versus wages. Not what the individual wages were, but what is the wage bill? What is the outgoings against the cap? But that's never going to happen. And I think while ever you've got. A, a board of 10 owners who all, all own the clubs who are looking after their own best interests. I don't think it, it will. It's probably something that is paid lip service to, but yeah, I'm sure there were clubs, club that exceeded the wage cap last, last season. I'm pretty certain there was. Will anything, will anything get done? Of course it won't. They're not going to penalise themselves, are they? So, no, I just, 
I, I, it's just not workable. I mean, Chris, the wives getting twice as much money for working in the shop for three hours. Or yeah, because there's there's ways around it, and they'll find ways around it, and and the, and the bigger clubs will do that. So, to to be honest, I don't see the point of it. I think as long as you as as long as each club spends what they can afford, then I don't see a problem. As long as clubs aren't living beyond their means, I don't think there's an issue. Just spend spend what you can afford. I think that should be that should be the rule. That should be the mantra, because there's no way that a wage cap is workable. Is is the way that I see it. Um, Kevin Hampson at KevJH52 uh, on Twitter says, "Do you think Devils announcing their full squad first has had any impact on other teams' decisions on player signing?" No, I don't think it has. Um, on paper, I think Devils have put together an incredibly competitive squad looking at it. There's some very, very good players in there. I'm surprised Matt Register hasn't come back, though. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised he's available. I wouldn't be surprised to see him, him at, at one of the other top elite league teams. Um, but, yeah, D Devils will, will always have a compat competitive roster while they've got the their, their owners and Todd Kelman in place. Brilliantly run club. Um I don't think it'll make too much of a difference, the fact that they've uh, announced their squad early. I mean, uh, Clan have, have announced their entire squad as well. So, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue. What do you say, Ken? We're not enough pace off them like the skill, though. Well, we'll see. I mean, um, Josh Waller's got some wheels on him. So, you know, he... he he, he's quite quick, but let, let's see. I mean, obviously, everything's on paper at the minute. We're yet to see any of these teams on the ice. It will all start shaking out in the opening weeks of the season. But this is the exciting time because there's, you know, uh, a lot, <laughs> you know, a lot of uh, anticipation for what about what is about to come. Alan Wyman, good evening, Alan. What have you caused this week? What have you caused, my friend? <laughs> If you're wondering about everything that kicked off with Dave Sims and Kyle Haas and Matthew, Matthew Gagnon and opinions on that, it's all Alan's fault. <laughs> but yes, uh, I think that Gallon had his fishing rod out yesterday and uh, what fun we've had with it. Uh, 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 what do I think of the Glasgow roster? I think they, they've put a good roster together. Uh, I think Malcolm Cameron being on his second season, um, I, I think I think they will I think they will do very well, uh, better than last season. Uh, I think he's quite he's going to be quite settled there. They brought a few players back from last season. They have brought some good players in. I think the only worry for them, and I, I said this to someone in the little Twitter Q and A I did on Saturday, if anyone saw that, I, I think they they probably look a bit lacking in the net minded department but again two pretty much unproven net minders but we'll see how they go on you know they may come in and be absolutely fantastic so we'll, we'll see but i i like the look of the, of the guys go roster i think think they'll, they'll be pretty decent this season johnson a great signing from kenwin yeah uh keep seeing it. a lot of commentary fans saying what a good signing that is for nottingham which is very very pleasing to see I mean, we've, we've worried about where goals are going to be coming from on the past few Panthers rosters. I don't think we've got any worry, worry about where goals are going to come from this season at all. Okay, next question. What is it? Chris, I'm just keeping an eye on Clan for Cameron's whopping quotes. <laughs> yeah, they're always good fun. Jamie as well. Jamie Bartholomew, evening, Jamie. He says, too many Challenge Cup games again, in my, in my opinion. Yep. Uh... Aaron Bates, do you think Panthers are already a more credible and attractive proposition potential new players under Patrick Stewardship? Yes. I'll go into that more in depth later. Ellipsis, we've still got the better Johnson, though. Well, we'll see, won't we? <laughs> uh, Alan Wyman, I didn't mean to wind anybody up. I know you didn't mean to, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just, just seemed to have kicked something off between Dave Sims and Kyle Haas, which which was a lot of fun to see. More on that later. 
you don't need to worry about the goals now you have Brady. Now, Adam Brady, I think, fantastic signing. A player I'm very familiar with from uh, the commentary I did with Manchester Storm last season. A, a quality, quality player. And I... I'm really looking forward to seeing him in the Panthers shirt. I would have, have liked Van Wormer as well, because uh, Van Wormer, I thought, was a great player, but he, but he has gone elsewhere, unfortunately. I think he's he's gone to uh, Romania from memory. And so it would have been great to see them two together. But I, I, I'm more than happy with Adam Brady. I think he will score a lot of goals for the Panthers this season, a lot of goals. Um, I see. Kenwin, is Connolly a huge risk for the Steelers? Don't know about a huge risk because he's a known quantity for them, but he's certainly a risk. He'll he'll be 37, I think, before the season starts. He's coming off a, a long injury, and it's his second major injury in four seasons. If you remember when he was at Glasgow, uh, Glasgow he got injured, a very bad injury towards the end of the season, which kept him out of the Great Britain World Championship squad. He was due to be in that. But I, th I think he did some sort of ACL damage. This time, it's shoulder damage. So, um, is it a risk? Probably. It's probably more of a risk for Brendan Connolly because if he hasn't got the speed when he does his little cheap shots, will he be able to get back to the bench in time? So, uh, you never know. You never know. Uh it's a risk. I don't think it's a huge risk, like I say, because he's a known quantity. We know what he can do. It, it's just, um, will he still bit? Will he still have the same qualities he had before his injury? I think that's what we we'll, we'll get that answered um, at the start of the season. I would think. I think pretty much preseason, first couple of weeks of the season, we'll, we'll see if uh, the injury has had any effect on Brendan Connolly. Right, so let's crack on because it's quite a few questions. Mike at Binnick Dave, who is a Steelers fan, I'm pretty sure he's a Steelers fan, says, uh, thoughts on Kieran Brown signing a two-year deal with Leeds? Do you think it's a lack of ambition from the player or a reflection of the playing time and salaries offered to young Brits? Um, as anyone who, who's watched these regularly will know, I'm a big, big fan of Kieran Brown, a player who I've seen go from Great Britain under 16s all the way through juniors. Um, got his you know, time on the bench with the Steelers, but uh, has really, really done it at a lower level. I honestly thought he he was destined for better things. Um, absolute natural goal scorer, but he seems to he seems to be really enjoying it at Leeds. He scored over 100 points last season. Uh, he's probably getting a, a decent salary. He's getting lots of ice time. Why would he take the risk to come to an elite league team and maybe sit on the bench? I mean, for, for, for Kieran Brown, he's probably at a point in his career where I think, I think he's, he's 21, 22, where he probably thinks, right, that's it. Uh, I, I'm going, I'm going to see what I can do here. And he's, he's, he's probably happy being, being the big fish in, in that, in that arena, I think he's more than capable of, of being second, third line on the elite league team. I think he, he's that good, but he's at a place where he's probably comfortable. He knows he's going to get a lot of ice time, and he's going to probably score a lot of points. So, and if he's getting if he's getting a decent wage, as I suspect, why, why not? You know, he's pro probably what probably what he wants to do. He he didn't really get a, get a fair chance at Steelers. I felt. Um, but he's he's gone to Leeds and he's doing absolutely outstanding things. Anthony, who will, will know about Brown's quality, being a Basingstoke fan, he says Brown shouldn't be in the national division. He's too good. No elite league club is going to play him to do the role his game is geared towards. Why and Penny to get splinters in his bottom? Exactly, exactly. But I think you're right. He is too good for uh, for the national league. Absolutely. Um, but to answer Mike's question, I think it is probably a reflection of the playing time and salaries offered. I don't think it's a lack of ambition. I really don't. Uh, Luke Woolley at Nevermore Luke. He says, with Edinburgh starting back up, do you think an increase in elite league teams would be beneficial or would a promotion-based format with the NIHL be a better option? 
Uh, I would love to see promotion and relegation. I don't think it's it's feasible due to the massive disparity in import levels and, and levels in quality between the two leagues. So I think that's out, out of the question. Um, Edinburgh coming back is fantastic. They're going to be in the SNL, um, but I think the, with the way finances are at the minute, not a chance they will come up to the elite league in, in the, I would say, in the short to medium term future. I think they'll see if they can get their feet and then they may look and see if it's viable, but I, I can't see it happening in the next five seasons, let's say. I just can't, especially with the cost of things as they are at the minute. I, I, so I think it's a non-starter, unfortunately. I think it's a non-starter for the EHL to increase the number of teams in the league at the minute for, for the reasons I've just mentioned. I think it's better to sort of consolidate with the 10 teams that they've got, wait until everything is on a more stable financial footing generally, and then look at maybe increasing the numbers in the league. I think that's the way to do it. Um, some Panthers questions coming up. Before I do, we'll go back to the comments. Jamie Bartholomew says, great to see Liam Kirk back training in the development camp with Arizona after his big injury. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Ellipsis says, I know it's not as common, but it's not impossible to be bought to be bought out of a contract if he gets more attention from the elite league. I'm guessing you're meaning uh, Kieran Brown there. No, that's, that's absolutely true. Jamie Bartholomew, Jordan Hadley leaving Coventry to rejoin M MKL. Uh, I, th I thought that had been announced, but I thought he was going to be on a two-way with Coventry. But didn't Danny Stewart say that? But yeah, I, Jordan Hadley needs ice time, so that's absolutely the right move for him. Uh, Chris Lovell, I don't understand why teams will sign unproven players straight from the NCAA, but if it's an improvement, Brit, they don't want to know. It's a mystery to us all. Um. Mark Rackham says there's another play from Niagara University that could end up in the Elite League, Chris Harper. I have it on good authority that he's being looked at. He's 25 D-man and has played 10 ECHL games. He sounds like the sort of player that is being uh, that would be looked at. I think probably teams like Fife, Manchester, Dundee, um, Obviously not Glasgow because they completed their roster. Maybe Guildford as well. Andrew Williamson, who is behind Edinburgh now? I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest. I know their coach is Stephen Lynch, but I'm not sure who's behind it. Bradley Brooks, MK wanted to come back. What happened with that? I, I'm not so sure that they wanted to come back. I think they wanted to consolidate at NIHL level before they looked at coming back. And I think they're doing very well with crowds at NIHL. Um, but I think with the costs involved, it's probably not the right time to move back up to the Elite League at this present time. Adam, we need a few more teams in the Elite League. It's getting stale. But, you know, it, it's better to consolidate and keep 10 teams than try and push, bring in two more teams and then lose two more teams again a couple of seasons later. That's happened before. So we don't really want want it to happen again. Ellipsis, I wasn't at the event with Danny, but a friend told me that Headley was gone. Would be very happy if there is a two-way. Uh, yeah, Headley will train with Comptry during the week. We'll, we'll, we'll play in MK, okay. Uh, hairy face, Colin Lundy. I did see that out there. So hello to you, Colin. What do you make of Flyers reshuffle with Todd moving to associate coat with Hutch and also taking on a GM role this season, a stepping stone for Todd moving into GM permanent? Yeah, it seems to be the way clubs are going, especially with Finner moving to GM at Manchester. Um, I think in all but name, Jeff Hutchins will be the head coach of the five Flyers from this moment forward. I think, I think that's, that's how it's going to look. Chris Lovell, I think the cost of living crisis has pushed the uh, Elite League expansion back by five years. Why take the financial risk as a new team and risk overall to the league? Absolutely agree. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, who, who is an MK fan, says MK won't be back anytime soon, but the crowds are consistently between 1,700 and 2,000 at the back end of last season. Uh, I'll come on to that later, Charlie, because I think you sent me that earlier and I've got that down to discuss later. 
Um, okay, uh, where are we? So, uh, Andrew Bladerwick, Panthers fan, at Blather67 on Twitter says, what are Panthers fans' thoughts on Gagnon returning? I don't think Guy Lapine had quite the same impact in his second spell as a Panther. I think there's always a risk when you bring fan favourites back for a second spell. Uh, we saw it with Lapine, as you mentioned. Um, we see, saw it... Uh, I mean, McCaslin did well when he came back. Sure, McCaslin when he came back for the second time. Robert Stanchop, not so much. Um, it's always a risk when you bring heroes back and they don't really perform as you expect them to. So that is a that is the risk. It seems to me though that, that Matthew Gagnon has uh, the report. All the reports are he's improved as a player since he was at Panthers. I didn't think he looked that great when he was at Manchester. If I'm perfectly honest, but he's gone away. He's had two solid seasons in the uh, ECHL, and now we picked him back up again. And let's be honest, the Panthers were getting bullied right, left, and centre last season. I can't see us getting bullied too much with Matthew Gagnon in the in the side. And let's face it, Matthew Gagnon can play. He's, he's, he, I've seen some ridiculous things from Steelers fans uh, over the past few days. Some quite absolutely idiotic stuff that they've been putting, um, which I hopefully nipped in the bud earlier today with with my little bit of deep analysis that I did and sort of just said, "Don't be talking so stupid." Um, but Matthew Gagnon can play an average of 2.14 penalty minutes a game. Not a lot, is it? That That's certainly not, not what you would call a uh, talentless goon, is it? Uh, also scores a few points. A decent D-man. Uh, plus minus isn't too bad at all. So, yeah, I, I think he'll do a good job. Personally, I would much pra- rather see a forward take on that sort of policeman role. Um because obviously you've only got 12 forwards compared to 6D. But, you know, I, I was a bit unsure. I wasn't so sure. As time goes on, uh, since the signing, I'm actually warming to it far more. So I guess we'll we'll, we'll see what happens when, when he hits the ice. Um, but I, I think it, it, we need someone of that ilk to stop us being bullied. So uh, I, I'm I'm quite happy with that signing uh, at the moment. So we'll see. But moving on to that, we've got a, a question from Hotshot604 or at 6 4 hotshot on Twitter. He says, is Gagnon an upgrade on Toussignon or not? Personally, I'm on the side of not. I feel Toussignon is less one-dimensional. Um, for a start, it's difficult to compare because Gagnon's a defenseman and Toussignon is a forward. Toussignon couldn't fight, whereas Gagnon can. Um, I, 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 to be honest, I really didn't get the hype with Toussignon at all. Did not get it. I just didn't see why, why people loved him so much. Yeah, he was willing. Yeah, he dropped the gloves. Off and got beaten up. Wasn't a policeman because he was too small. So for me, if you if you're going to say a straight choice between the two, I'm going to go for Gagnon. But it's a bit unfair to um, it's a bit unfair to compare them because one's a defenceman, one's a forward. So you know, Gagnon for me. Adam at RP Adam RP eighty nine, who is on, I believe. Uh, he says, "What do you think of Gary Graham having so many leaders in one team? Would it mess with the dynamic?" No, I, I, I think Gary Graham has made it very, very clear on his podcast that he likes to have a team full of leaders. He wants leaders in the room. Um, I think all but two of the players signed so far have worn an A or a C on their jersey at some point in their careers. Um, so there's going to be a lot of leaders. So that means that if... As before, the team choose the captains and the alternate captains. They are going to be top notch if they're, especially if you you've got a team with a lot of leaders. So, I think in that respect, no, it doesn't. It, I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it will mess the, with with the dynamic. Um, Gary Graham has made it very clear he wants players who are totally committed to the team. 
Uh, he said it in the latest podcast, play for the badge on the front, not the name of, of the back. If you play for the name on the black on the back, I don't want you. I want players who play for the team. So, uh, no, I, I, I haven't got any issues with that whatsoever. I think I think it, it, it actually makes a lot of sense, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Chris P at Chansu92 says the Panthers had their season tickets on sale until the deadline at the end of June, then a week of signings, and they put them back on sale for a week. Desperation due to poor sales. Can he move as the signings have got folk fired up for the season or something else? Now, had that had happened in any of the previous seasons, I would certainly say it was probably due to poor sales. Under the regime that is in place now uh, and the way things are now, I actually honestly believe that they probably had demand for season tickets because of the signings we've made. The team on paper looks really, really good, looks full of goals. I think people are excited to see this team on the ice. And I think that's why they put them back on sale. And let's say they've only put in, put them back on sale for five days. If they put them back on sale for, say, a month, then I'd probably be uh, more towards thinking that maybe sales aren't great. But they're, they're, they're only on sale for five days, so I think it's an opportunity for, the, for those people who were maybe touch and go on a season ticket up until the deadline. We've now signed some really good players, uh, and I think people are going, no, no, we want to buy a season ticket. Can I buy a season ticket? And I think the demand is there, and I think that's, that's, uh, that's why it's been done. And... You've got to say it makes great business sense getting uh, getting some some more money in while they can. I think it, I think it's I think it's a really good move by the club. So uh, yeah, uh, I I I just think it, it, the, the the demand has been there. To be perfectly honest, I don't think there's anything sinister in it, in it at all. Uh, Matthew Collier, Matt Collier, Matthew Collier nine on Twitter. Uh, I only started to watch ice hockey in the Panthers halfway through last season. When I moved to Nottingham, I loved it so much I bought a season ticket for this season. Was there the same fees, same feeling in the build-up to the season this time last year? And how does the calibre of current signings differ from those last year? Uh, to answer the last question, calibre of the current signings differ from those last year, night and day. On paper, this looks a far, far better squad. But fair play to you, Matt. If you bought a season ticket um, because you loved it so much last season, then a massive amount of credit to you. Because if you bought a season ticket on the back of that, let's hope that the team this season is as good as what I think it's going to be. Because then you are really going to be happy. Um, because... Let's be honest, last season was dross for the most part. Uh, I'm hoping this season it's going to be a lot different. And looking at the players we've signed, I firmly believe it will be. Uh, so I hope you enjoy your season, Matt. And just was there the same feeling in the build up to, to the season this time last year? I think there was, but I think there was more to, due to the fact that, that We'd not had a season because of COVID, so I think there was a lot of excitement. I, I talked to a lot of my friends, and it was just that just want to get back in the in the arena and see a game with people there. Obviously, as the of the as the season went on, that all, all went a bit south, and I think there was there was a few. I think there was a few sort of dissenting voices uh, during the off season last season with regards Panthers squad. Uh, who were proved right in the end. Um, but I think most people just couldn't wait to see hockey back. Uh, uh, so I think there was excitement because of that. So I think it, it's difficult to compare sort of this off-season to last season because of that. For me, I, I'm so enthused about this season, really enthused about the club. The, the change has been absolutely incredible. It, it, it's a diff completely different club, completely different. And yeah, you know, I'm just <laughs> I just can't wait to see this team on the ice. Um, so yeah, uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, coming to Charlie's question, Charlie B, Charlie at block nineteen. What lines do you think the centres will play? I think Sorensen, Welsh, Brady, Myers. I think that will change because I think Johnson will play centre, which probably means Welsh and Sorensen may go on the wings. 
I guess we'll have to wait and see. I don't like predicting lines too much because, you know, uh, Gary Graham will be far better at that than I am. So I don't really go go into the, the job of predicting lines or who's going to play where. I'll let Gary Graham get the squad together and change the pack camp and make the decision <laughs> because yeah and then uh, i'll watch it and see so let's let's leave it at that one um who was it i asked to, to send that question again that was further up um i can't remember who it was but if you if you pop that question back in i'll i'll, I'll uh, have a look at it now Jamie Bartholomew, thoughts on the National League? I'm really excited and impressed with what both Hull and Bristol have done in terms of recruitment. I've got to be perfectly honest, I've not paid a lot of attention to the National League too much. Craig, it was you. Can you pop that question back in again, please? And and, and I'll take a look at it. Um, Jamie, so I've not really been looking at the National League. I've, the other thing, I've been massively busy with work over the, over the past sort of couple of months, like hugely busy. Um, so I've sort of paid attention to the elite league when I can, but I haven't really paid that much attention to the national league. I've got to be honest. Uh, I've obviously seen little bits on Twitter, but I've not looked at anything in depth. Um, as the season starts and I probably get a bit more free time, I'll be able to look at it and I'll probably start doing card sets for, for certain teams in the National League on for blindside again. So then I'll start looking at it in a bit more bit more depth. But I just I'm I'm afraid. I'm uh, really sorry because I, I just haven't had the time to have a look have a look at everything unfortunately. Just just work has been manic. Uh just just a, a lot on at the at the minute. Which is great. But uh yeah it, it does does uh, impact your free time just a bit. Um, so Craig, you said, Craig, was I surprised about the Mass Panthers clear out? Was this due to fans, fans upset or the new management in place? Um, I think there was a Mass Panthers clear out because the players last season weren't good enough. And I don't, can anyone argue that they've not been replaced with better players on paper? I don't think anyone can do that. So I think that's the reason. They just weren't good enough. It needed to be better and they've got better in. Uh, I think obviously the new management and new coaching places had a lot to do with that. Um, but yeah, it, it, for me, um, the last season's team wasn't even close to being good enough. Uh, wholesale changes have been made and we'll see if this season's team is. I strongly hope and to be honest, I strongly suspect that it will be. Because, like I say, I am incredibly enthused about, about this team and the signings that have been made so far. Very, very happy with them. Um, more on the uh, Gagnon, David Sims, Kyle Haas fallout. Uh, David Stevenson. So if anyone saw my tweet earlier this morning, which, which sort of in-depth looked at uh, M-Forces and their penalty minutes per game and points per game, etc. It was all, all caused, caused by this question from David Stevenson. And he says, interested, interested to hear your opinion on the back and forth between Dave Sims and Kyle Haas on Twitter. Various responses from fans saying they would rather have players as opposed to enforcers. And Haas seems to be giving a good insight into the mind of a player who has been in that role. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's fair to say that Kyle Haas basically told Dave Sims he was talking rubbish when it came to enforcers. I mean, this is Dave Sims who can't even tight knot in, in a tweet without putting stars, which is really pathetic, frankly. Um, but Kyle Haas, who, of course, played that policeman role for Dundee last season, basically told him as it is, uh, essentially said... Uh, well, Gany, what Gagnon will do will scare your team like I scared your team and why you didn't make the playoff, why you got knocked out of the first round of the playoffs, which was, um, yeah, quite roundly loved. <laughs> in fact, Steve Crichton has just put a tweet in with this. It seems the tennis match with Sims, seen the tennis match with Sims and Haas, but Haas hasn't signed for anyone yet. So not sure why he went full hog with Simsy. I believe Carl Haas is retiring from what um, Omar Pasha was saying in a Q and A a couple of months ago. I, d I may have changed, but um, I, yeah, I believe he, he's going to retire because I believe he's got an opportunity outside of hockey. Is is what what was said? So. 
That's why. Not sure why he went the full hog with Sim Simsy. I think it's because Dave Sims said something that he didn't agree with and used the benefit of his experience to put Simsy right. Of course, a lot of Sheffield fans weren't having that, but out of the two, I know which one uh, I would err towards when it comes to talking about fighting and uh, being an enforcer in hockey. And let's face it, they're not enforcers now. Enforcers were the likes of Barry Nykar, Dennis Vial, etc., who who would have a fight every single game. We're lucky if we see a fight, one in, one fight in every six games these days. So the likes of Matthew Gagnon, the likes of Kyle Haas, the likes of Lyndon Springer, they are not enforcers. Yet they will fight when they want when they want to or when they have to, but they're not enforcers. They they are essentially players first, enforcers second. So that is that is the way that I see it, frankly. Um and I, I did that in-depth dive on the stats comparing different enforcers. So I compared Kyle Haas, I compared Matthew Gagnon, I compared Zach Fitzgerald, who was probably the last uh, last sort of fighter that Steelers had, and he was very good at it. I mean, a lot of respect for Zach Fitzgerald. Uh, and Barry Nykar. So, and you know, Nykar was up at five penalty minutes per game. Uh, I think Zach Fitzgerald was up at, at 4.3. Kyle Haas was two and a half, and Matthew Gagnon, 2.14. Then they're not, they're not enforcers anymore. Barry Nykar was an enforcer. He was there purely to, to fight. Matthew Gagnon, Kyle Haas, they're not. So, so that's that's really that, I think. Uh, let's have a look at the comments because I've, I've ignored them a bit. <laughs> uh, last year had too many wait and see signings. I would agree with that. Um Everyone on Black's back to give more money, possibly. Adam says, Steelers are literally just scared that they will be pushed around this season and one hard check to Connolly will take him out the season. Well, um, I think that's a little unfair to Connolly. Um, but Steelers have not had anyone who can really do that fighting job or can look after them for the past couple of seasons, really. Now, whether, whether Aaron Fox changes that, I guess we will wait and see. Uh, Ellipsis, what are your thoughts on Blaze signing Colton Yellowhorn? It's split our fan base right down the middle, half saying it's an awful signing, signing and half celebrating. Good signing, top line for Clan last season, over a point a game, what is not to like? Put him, Make sure you put him with a goal scorer, though. Because you, you, I think you need you need someone who knows where the net is to play with Yellowhorn. Yellowhorn got so many assists for Matthew Roy, so I think if he's paired with a good goal scorer, it will be an excellent signing for the Blaze. Uh, Teddy, uh, I've had I've had a couple come in on Twitter, so I'll, I will go to them. Uh, Teddy says, "Who would you say was the last real EIHL enforcer?" Ooh, that's a really good question. You're probably looking at the likes of Sean McMorrow and Alex Penner. I think it's changed a lot since then. I mean, I remember McMorrow would come on. Uh, he would practically start the game, for, every game for Belfast. Um, so, yeah, I think McMorrow, Penner, I think it, it, it's changed a lot since then. They would, I would say, they were the they were the last players I would say who came in who were just there purely to to fight and really not do a lot else. Um, I thought I'd seen another one on Twitter, but I, oh yeah, sorry, hockey fan zero one zero one zero. I feel like the recruitment has been excellent so far for Panthers, but I can't help but feel we are crying out for an offensive D man. Hmm, thoughts? I think we. We looked pretty okay. I thought Kelly Summers, okay, he he he, he missed all last season for, because of injury, but I think I think his stats look look pretty decent. Um, I would I would with one uh, defensive signing defenseman signing to make, I would go for a stay at home to be honest, because I think well, Gagnon will get forward because he he has played between D and forward. Um, so no, I I don't I don't think we I've got. 
too much of a problem with with the way our D is set up offensively as well. Uh, but I prefer defenders to defend. It's the way I look at it. Charlie Brown says Brent Handley. No, 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 no. No, he wasn't. He could fight and he did some odd things, but he, he was a decent enough defenseman as well. So I can't I can't agree with that. Um Mike Ware says Jamie Bartholomew. Blimey. That Charlie, opinions on Hopkins signing with Panthers, not a two-way. Delighted. Hopkins is a star of the future. Absolute natural goal scorer. 